Alrighty team, let's get started. Uh, lots of folks on the line now. I'm sure more will trickle in, but we've got lots to cover today. So I uh, just want to start off by saying uh, thank you so much to every single one of you for joining us today. I know we have lots of Salesforce and Traction Rec current customers on the line. Uh, we have some folks who are here, uh, you know, just looking to get started on the Salesforce platform. And then some organizations who uh, just want to simply learn more, which is super awesome. So what we're here to chat about today uh, is building a centralized member service hub using Salesforce case management. Now, before we get started, let's do some introductions for today's uh, amazing panelists. Vanessa, why don't you kick us off? Great. I'm Vanessa Providence. I am the Senior Operations Director of Customer Experience at the YMCA in Memphis, um, which that title doesn't actually reflect what I actually do. I'm more of a systems, systems administrator um, for our organization. Okay. And Emily? I'm Emily Glading. I'm the Senior Director for Information Systems for the YMCA of Delaware. Uh, just like Vanessa, I uh, wear a lot of different hats. So I act as uh, the Administrator for Salesforce. Um, I also manage a team uh, that we call our business resource team that does a lot of support for the branches and also um, do a lot of IT work too. Amazing. You're both very humble. You both wear a ton of hats and you do a lot. Um, and hi, everyone. If I haven't met you, I'm Stephanie Anderson. So I'm our regional VP of sales here at Traction Rec. So I work with all of our YMCA and JCC customers really at that kind of evaluation stage of the Salesforce platform. So lots of familiar names on the, at the line today. So uh, thanks for joining us and nice to meet those of you who I haven't met. And Johnny. And uh, hi, everyone. Uh, Johnny McInnes. I'm the Senior Solution Engineer for Traction Rec. Uh, been here since we started this almost six years ago. And yeah, excited to take you through today's demo. Amazing. I'm sure many people here have met Johnny in the past <laughs> in one, one capacity or another. Perfect. Um, so folks, so the agenda for today, I wanted to give you all a little bit of a, so you know, some structure on how the next hour is going to go. So first I will start off with some kind of general housekeeping rules because, you know, it's not like we've been doing Zoom for two years, but I uh, want to walk through that anyways. Then we will get into kind of what is case management and how our YMCA's on the line um, are using case management today. Then we will get a live demonstration of the solution from Mr. Johnny, and you can kind of see it in action. And then we'll kind of round it off with the impacts and results that uh, Vanessa and Emily have seen at their wise in regards to implementing case management and really going to keep that kind of collaborative and have a little fireside chat with them uh, for you all to learn more. And then, of course, we will wrap up with Q&A and conclusions. So before we get to everything, uh, housekeeping rules. So um, first, Things first, if you want to, you can change your Zoom name to the actual organization you're from as well. And that kind of helps give us a little bit of context of whether, you know, you're a customer, you're a prospect, or just looking to learn more. Uh, the chat uh, Q&A, um, so you guys can pop that in the chat box. Any questions you have that come up, uh, feel free to uh, put those in there. And we will either try and get to them, you know, during this conversation or save them for the end. And you can come off mute and ask those live, uh, but we'll try and get to as many as possible. Uh, and then, of course, this webinar is being recorded, so we will send this out to everyone um, after today's uh, webinar. And that's that. Next slide. Perfect. All right, everyone. So before we hear from our incredible panelists on, you know, how they're using case management at their prospective YMCA's, uh, let's briefly discuss what case management is, right? So, Customer support and customer service has always been of the utmost importance to, you know, YMCA's, JCC's, and alike organizations. And while I don't think the pandemic has changed the standard of support that your members, participants, you know, volunteers, and so on expect of you, but it has caused the need for some kind of internal restructuring, right? So with limited resources on hand, it's hard to ensure that you know, membership directors have all the time to answer all the membership related support requests, right? Or that your camp director has the time to, you know, respond to a handful of questions about upcoming registration. So what is the tool that can support you in building this kind of centralized member service hub? So case management. Uh, case management in really the simplest terms is an offering from Salesforce that helps you manage the intake, tracking, and communication of uh, support requests from your constituent base. 
And the goal of this tool is really to streamline the process for your customers, right? Provide consistency in the support that you're delivering and ensure that, you know, gone are the days of having support requests go to 10 different email addresses or, you know, tracking issues in Excel spreadsheet or a sticky note that then, you know, it doesn't allow you to follow up uh, with that individual correctly or in a timely manner. So with that, you will see kind of case management in action in a couple minutes in the in the live demo. But um, Emily, Vanessa, I'd love to hear more about kind of your YMCA's uh, and kind of the offerings that you provide, uh, because I know that folks on the line will try and draw those parallels and similarities and, you know, their organizations. And then I'd love to hear about how you're using case management today and what prompted you to start evaluating a tool like Salesforce uh, for case management. So Emily, why don't you start with a little bit more about YMCA Delaware and your organization as a whole? Sure. So um, we are going into our third camp season with uh, with Traction Rec. Um, we started right at the beginning of 2020. Um, we got camp registration going and then um, pandemic hit and we had to regroup and, and, and uh, redirect a lot of things. Uh, but as of um, March of 2021, we're fully live on Traction Rec. So uh, we're using membership programs, camp and childcare, all of our program areas are on Traction Rec. And we also use MPSP for our financial development um, components. So um, <clears throat> I feel like we've learned a lot through the process. Um, you know, so uh, I think by the time we got to membership, uh, we kind of had it down pat and uh, that, that implementation went very smoothly. Um, we initially started, when we started with camp in 2020, we knew that our um, members were going to be confused because they were having to sign on to a new system and have a new username and a new password and that kind of thing. Uh, so we try to be proactive about it. We sent them out instructions and um, all for all of our past campers. Um, and we created a form stack link um, to if people needed support because we knew that it would be much easier for my team to help somebody with their user ID and password or struggling through a new registration process than it would be for our branches and you know the branches to take phone calls regarding that. Mm -hmm. So that was working pretty well for us um, but at some point we decided that we really wanted to make it a little bit more structured. So we started filtering those form requests into cases and we loved it. It has worked out really well for us. And now we have a ton of stuff going through cases. So um, my business resource team processes all of the membership terminations, the holds, um, payment updates, membership changes. So all those requests are being filtered through the branches to us uh, they fill out a form and it goes into cases and we're able to manage everything there. We have a full picture of what we've done for that member because we're using cases and we're linking the case to the member's account and their contact. Uh, we know who's processing things and how many we're processing a day and how many we're receiving a day. So um, that has worked out really well for us. Um, so well that we even use it now for new user requests. And um, as I mentioned, um, I also uh, do some IT work. So I even use it when people are requesting new hardware and software. So we've kind of expanded the use of cases and just found that it's really helped us stay organized and focused and get back to people as quickly as we can. That's awesome. So it sounds like you're really using it for everything, especially since you are a live traction rec customer. <laughs> what were some of the biggest challenges you were trying to solve before implementing this? Like what was kind of your, your life before case management? I know you talked about the, the form stack, but you know, were you getting complaints or, or kind of what was happening within your organization? Um, I, I think <laughs> on our end, uh, it was kind of like we were all trying to jump in and help the person. Um, <laughs> so, you know, we were kind of bumping into each other a little bit. Um, we also, I got inspired by Vanessa. So we are now bringing in our um, internal staff support um, questions, email to case. And we started doing that last week. And it's it's been like amazing to be able to see how much work we're doing in a day and how many people we're getting questions from and what type of questions they are so that we know what we need to work on as a team. That's awesome. I love that. And for context that you just learned from Vanessa, you know, a week ago and I already have that implemented. It's very cool. Um, I love that. Very nice. Vanessa, tell the folks a little bit more about YMCA Memphis, you know, how you're using cases today and what, what was that, you know, underlining issue that, uh, that prompted you to evaluate Salesforce for case management? 
Yeah, so uh, our Y has about 15,000 members for context, and um, we serve uh, about 7,000 child care participants through before and after care in our community. Um, and so prior to the pandemic, our, you know, we, our goal was to like centralize our call center, uh, really be, be able to take all of those calls from our branches and child care and centralize them into one hub. And with that, um, have a ticketing or case solu management solution to help process those requests. Um, and then the pandemic hit and we kind of had to switch gears and do it much faster. And so we, um, you know, centralized our call center as we closed our branches and began that search uh, very quickly for a solution and landed on Salesforce case management. And so Currently, we, pr we primarily use case management for our um, customer support call center and also, as Emily mentioned, for an internal uh, child care call center that we have for our um, site staff. Um, and we've uh, been able to centralize all of those requests either on the phone or through forms. So similar to Emily, um, using forms to create cases for holds, terminations, uh, withdrawals for child care. Um, we even at some point used it uh, when our state had a, an emergency worker grant. We were able to use it really as in kind of uh, their submission to uh, of their proof of or verification information because the state required we had a driver's license and um, um, a um, proof of address. So we were able to utilize cases to manage um, essentially those um, verification requests. And then we've also expanded a, a little bit further than that to include our HR. So they have a few of their um, their processes for like employee terminations. Um, and then in, in those cases are able to have their own special uh, path and flow. So they're able to manage their work uh, specifically to the way that they need to manage it. So that's kind of how we are using it currently. I love it. That's so awesome. Yeah, your use cases just expand far and wide. And for context of everyone on, on the line, um, Emily and Vanessa, their YMCs are in two very different places when it comes to Salesforce. So Emily and folks have been live, you know, using Traction Rec and NPSP for quite some time now. And Vanessa and the YMC in Memphis, they're just about to start. So they were actually utilizing case management without any sort of, you know, other kind of data in there in relation to Traction Rec. So they're able to use it as a standalone offering, um, you know, even with their, their previous uh, CRM or membership management software. So uh, definitely a great way to really get get your feet wet um, on the Salesforce platform and get started and uh, start that kind of digital transformation and phased approach when it comes to Salesforce. Awesome. Uh, one kind of specific question for you both, because I know that people in the line are probably like, oh, you know, we have so many ways of communicating with our members today when it comes to support. What kind of tools were you all managing? I know you mentioned forms, but pre-case management, were you emailing, texting, calling, or how are you managing that communication uh, with your, your constituent base? So we were using a lot of forms and you know, a lot of email. So, um, and I think for me, one of the great things is that we can like, you know, you kind of have that 360 view of the customer now. So now that the case is attached to the, the to the contact in the account, you can kind of see like, um, <laughs> for instance, we have a virtual Y and we have single sign on. So um, we have come to know that there are, we have a few members who really struggle with their passwords and they request uh, assistance to logging on to the virtual Y frequently, but we can all see that. So if we go in and we see Mary Smith has a question today and we look at Mary Smith's account, we realize she submitted the same question two weeks ago and three weeks ago and whatever. So she might need a little extra support. <laughs> so, um, you know, we, we kind of know um, that that person might struggle with this or, you know, some, if they're trying to say that no one's gotten back to them, we have records of all the emails we've sent them. So we can say, well, we did email you on this date and you opened the email. <laughs> so, you know, we have all that visibility to the communications we've done with the members. So um, I think that's helped us tremendously. That's huge. Yeah. The, uh, rather than having it live on, you know, multiple different places. So, you know, right. Beth this time and that's an Excel and you've got a sticky note and there's no kind of cohesive view of your communication. Mm -hmm. with the exactly. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Lovely. Um, so Vanessa, you have nothing to share on communication tools. I think you covered that, but anything else? Yeah. I mean, uh, what Emily said is really, is really accurate, right? And even we're, you know, we're not completely on the traction 
platform yet. So even for us, we've been able to, you know, just like she said, that 360 view, I mean, it's not, not fully 360 for us yet, but, um, you know, even having the ability to see all of the different requests from that particular person that have come through has really helped our team a lot. And I mean, also just being able to manage instead of like marking something as unread in an email address and, and assuming that, you know, that means that it, hasn't been done yet, but maybe I have sent an email. And so maybe somebody else then sends another email, you know, that is all you're able to track all that so much better and so much easier. I love that. Yeah. And not just that individual person who's working on the case, but the entire organization, right? So right. you're not duplicating efforts and everyone knows kind of their, their job. So right. Love that. All right. Let's pass it over to Johnny for the actual demo so people can understand what we're talking about if they've never seen case management. <laughs> Thanks, Steph. All right, hello everyone. Housekeeping here. Okay, so I am gonna take you through a, a relatively high level tour of uh, all the member service and case management functionality. Uh, we won't be able to cover everything today, but I'll try and take you through as much as we can. So I think the big thing, and you're hearing a lot about uh, being able to see this visibility into what's happening. And I think it really starts on the staff side. Uh, clearly, when you've got, and I'm going to be taking you through a few different dashboards throughout the demo. This is one that I just put right on my home, uh, right on my homepage. So I can see what the caseload is across everybody. I, in my demo, actually assign all cases to a queue first. And then I allow the people who are working that queue to go and take ownership of those cases. And then it becomes individual workloads. But just having this quick picture for staff of everything that's going on across the entire organization. And you'll see in a second here how you see it when you're in context of one particular, uh, one particular uh, contact. Um, but from the actual member standpoint as well, uh, and if, for those of you that were running Traction Rec or ultimately uh, will be running Traction Rec, we give, it, we give them really a very simple way to, to interface. And so a lot of you should recognize this because this is the same way you interact with us uh, uh, to submit cases. But the member can come out here and see the status of all of their cases at all times. So they don't have to call in for everything just to see what's going on with my cases, they'll be able to see which ones are on hold, which ones are working, which ones are new, et cetera. Uh, and I think that's huge as far as, uh, it just as far as visibility. So staff and members seeing that. So let's go through the actual process. We'll take you through the life cycle of a case. Um, I'll use the, I'll start with the example of somebody who, who is actually logged into the secure community, but I'll show you other ways to create cases as well. Um, so you can see here, uh, we've got the place where they can create a case. I just want to call out, uh, so as they're creating it, and they'll have access, it'll default immediately to who they are. It'll show them everybody else in the household. So if they, they were opening up a case for somebody else in their household, they could specify that. Now, this is where you'll build your specific case types that you want to use, and that'll drive how things are routed. So if I have a membership inquiry, I've got very specific membership things that I can do. If it's something about a program or childcare inquiry, then again, very different things. So you can get very granular about uh, categorizing all of these cases, routing them to the right people, responding in an automated fashion, uh, et cetera. So let me just do one here. I'm going to put in a freeze request. If you are multi-location, you can have uh, the default or main location, or they can pick it. Um, and I want to put my membership on hold. And it's because I am uh, traveling in March. So that's it. That's really all they have to do. There is some uh, one of the pieces of optional functionality uh, that we're not talking about today is that Salesforce actually provides something called case deflection. So if you adopt Salesforce knowledge, um, then as they're typing in what they're asking about, it will automatically surface over here uh, knowledge articles that apply to uh, based on the text that they're entering in the question. This can just uh, you know, give, let them go right into uh, um, self-service functions and things like that. So uh, we can talk about that and get deeper into it in a follow-on demo. You, there is also web chat and, and chat bots available from Salesforce. I know some of you are using different products for that, but uh, those are available as well. So the case gets submitted 
And then what happens now is a whole bunch of automation happens. Um, and so th there's a number of things. The first thing is there's an auto response piece that happens. So the person that submitted the case gets a, uh, hey, thanks for uh, submitting your case. There's your case number and whatever other messaging you want to put in here based on the type of case that it is. It could include links to FAQs, all kinds of stuff while they're waiting for their case to be done. At the same time, uh, there's also a full auto assignment process. So as we go back to the staff view, I've actually got, uh, so I'm just, I'm not going to show much of the back end. I just wanted to show this one to just show you a little bit of the automation that's happening. Every case that comes in, I have it going through this and determining if it's anything related to billing, assign it to finance. If it's membership, membership, program, childcare, childcare, et cetera. So it will automatically go through these in order and then assign it to the first match that it gets to uh, make sure that it goes to the right group. And this can be people. I happen to like the use of cues, but you could assign these to individual people if you want as well. So what has happened as a result, and here I'm using the, uh, uh, the new split view uh, way that you can use list view. So I've just got my membership case queue because that happens to be uh, um, the queue that I'm working on. And so I can just pick that record and up it comes and I see everything that they put in here. The first thing I'm gonna do because it's coming out of a queue is I'm gonna accept it. So that immediately changed the case owner from the membership queue to me. So now it'll come out of the queue and everybody else on my team will know that that one's being worked on. I'll also set the status to working because I'm working on it right now. And then from here, I might want to do a few things. I see what they're looking for and it's like, hey, I'm going to call them just to make sure I understand the date. So I'm going to call the confirmed dates just to make sure it's not part of the month. Uh, put in any other notes that I want. I'll link that right to Bill and take any notes that I want about that. Yeah, it's absolutely about um, the full month of March is what they're looking for. So I've got that detail. Um, and now I can go about, if you are a traction rec customer, now you're, you can just simply, I'm gonna take Bill's record, open it up in a new, new tab. And now, you know, with those people that are using rec, you know that you're gonna drive all of your amendments off of the contact record. And then I'm gonna go right into the freeze process do whatever the service happens to be that they're asking for. Um, and then away we go. So uh, I can put in the details here. He's freezing for the entire month of March. And I won't go through the whole process because you guys that are putting memberships on hold now know how, how all this works and so on and so forth. And it'll figure out and do the whole transaction and everything that goes along with it. And it doesn't matter what they're asking for. Um, you'll be able to, as they said, uh, go and take a look at that contacts record and see everything else that's going on with them. So I've got my full case history here. I can see other things that are happening. Uh, and then I've got access to doing whatever other service activity they're particular asking for. So once I'm done and I've done the service, I've, I can communicate back a couple different ways. I mean, I can just write an ad hoc email. That's really simple. Um, so I could do this uh, and just and put it in this way which is fine if you wanted to uh, communicate uh, communicate just some ad hoc thing back to them. And you can see here, it knows that it's part of this thread, uh, threaded conversation that we're having about this case. So it keeps it all in the threaded conversation. So I could do that. Or there's this concept of case comments, um, which you can use as well. Um, so if freeze is done, enjoy your vacation whatever it might be, you can put this in and these can be internal or you can make them public and it will offer you the chance to notify the customer that a new public note has been done. So we're going to do that. I'm now finished. I'm going to close the case and I'm done from creation to assignment, auto response, communication. Everything's basically been done with uh, Bill's record now and that case is now closed off. If we pop back into the community, we can see now that all these extra communications have come to Bill. Here's the ad hoc email that I sent. And then here's the alert. Uh, hey, there's been a new update on your case. You can go and take a look at it. He's like, okay, I'll do that. So he goes and views his case history and everything that's happened with this one, uh, they'll be able to see uh, from like I said, case comments to field changes, how long it's been open, all of that kind of thing. 
but of course, there's other ways to create cases as well. Um, if they're not, if you're not using a rec customer with a community, you can still have forms on your website. As we heard, you can use a third-party form tool like Formstack if you happen to have it. If you don't, Salesforce does provide Web to Case, which is very similar to uh, Web to Lead for those of you that might be using uh, lead management uh, with Salesforce. It's a very similar process, but of course you have to supply your details because you're not authenticated. So I need to know who you are and I just keep it really simple. But probably even more common than that is gonna be staff created cases. So in this particular case, I've got a, I'm looking at all of my open cases here on a Kanban board, somebody walks up or they call in and I'm all about search before create for this stuff. So if Marcus is calling in, I really want to open his contact record because as you heard, this could be just a, a could be a calling in on something uh, that's already open or it could be something new, but you can see the whole case history here. If it is something entirely new, just like this, almost everything is defaulted. All you're really putting in is the details of what they're calling about. Um, it defaulted to in person, but if you want to put that over the phone, that's fine. And then you just record the issue here. And that creates the case uh, manually that way. You can also do it even quicker than that. If you are uh, if you don't want to even uh, look up the contact, uh, you could have uh, sort of a, a quick global action here. Look up Marcus, just put in a type of what they're looking for and the subject and you're done. It can just be that easy to create it. And then you can go right to the case from there as well. So super quick and easy for people to get all these cases in. Um, and then two of the things that, two other ways that uh, uh, you can do it that we, we won't cover today, but email the case was mentioned. So people can email, um, you know, member service or help desk at your organization, and that will automatically create a case uh, inside Salesforce as well. And there is actually another add-on for social to case. So if you wanted to have posts in Facebook or Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, be able to automatically create cases from there and then either respond in the case or respond right in the social channel, that's another, uh, uh, that's another option that you have as well. Um, so just kind of to, uh, to wrap up, I think it really boils down to getting the cases in uh, so you've got all those different ways that cases can be created online, social, email, staff created. Being able to manage those cases with different views that you saw from split views to Kanban views to all of that kind of uh, uh, different ways to view your cases. Uh, and then, of course, dashboards. Uh, what, would, uh, what would anything in Salesforce be without uh, the reports and dashboards? Uh, that happen here. So here's just another one of the out-of-the-box dashboards where KPIs are uh, uh, providing uh, different uh, views into the way, uh, way things are. They've got another one on staff performance, which will actually break down uh, how many cases are being opened and closed and time uh, cases are open, uh, age of cases, that type of thing. Uh, and then another one that actually breaks it down by household, which is really interesting because as you've heard, you'll be surprised how you have your, your high volume uh, uh, users um, that, that are using this. And one other piece of automation that's running in the background that we don't see in this demo is there's also an escalation piece. So all the while this is going, I have some rules set up that says, if a billing inquiry is over four years old, automatically escalate it to somebody and notify them. But if a membership or a program general inquiry, that has to be eight or 16 hours old before I'm gonna escalate it. So all of that is happening as well. And then I think I'll just wrap up with, there's uh, no point doing any Salesforce demo without talking about the fact that all of this can be mobile. Um, so the same dashboard that you see uh, and access to all the reports is here and the same ability. So you don't have to be, your service people don't have to be tethered to uh, their desk. So uh, maybe I'm uh, monitoring all of the escalated cases and I just want to open this one up and there's uh, one from Tyson. His card didn't scan last time he came in. So I can just open that up. I take a look and I want to record a case comment for somebody on my team. So I just put in a new case comment here 
and away we go. So all of this, again, for managing it, uh, let's print a new card for Tyson and have it available at the front desk and send him an email to let him know it's there. I can make that public or not. Oh, kept talking while it was recording. And uh, that part is in and away we go. I could update the status. I could reassign it to somebody, et cetera. So Salesforce case management in 10 or 11 minutes. <laughs> Tony, that was the quickest demo you've ever done. <laughs> It really is. It really is. I have a four-hour version of that demo for anybody who's interested. Well, Stefan is hilarious and said, you know, gave you obviously kudos on your uh, on your demo environment and said he's going to be taking screenshots of all of your uh, page layouts, etc. So. Oh, you bet. I'll send them along. <laughs> I love it. Um, the demo actually made me think of something that we didn't really talk about prior to and maybe it is in relation uh, to benefits more, but a CTI integration um, mm -hmm. and using your, your phone system. So uh, Vanessa, I know Memphis did that. Delaware, I, I can't remember if you did that. I only know not yet. Amazing. Vanessa, do you want to talk a little bit about the telephony integration and uh, how you guys are using that? Yeah, so um, we are currently, well, we're currently using Mitel for our call center. Um, and so we were able to have a soft phone pop up within the screen. And so while they're like on their Salesforce screen at the bottom um, uh, left corner, there's a little pop-up that essentially is their, their desk phone in a way. Um, so it will accept the call and they can transfer the calls right within there. Um, and when a call comes in for them, it, you know, we have a, a screen pop where it will pop the contact record associated with that phone number if there is one. Otherwise, it'll just um, prompt them to create a new case for that person where they can create a contact as well. Um, so currently we're using Mitel. Um, Mitel was re recently purchased by another company. So we're looking at uh, that company because we can't buy things anymore. So, um, but the, I, the new company also has the same thing. So uh, it's been really great for our agents because they are able to, uh, within that same screen, you know, create the case, maybe transfer the call and then continue finishing that case while that member's already been moved on to the next person. That's awesome. Super clean, nice automation. I love that. Yeah, I, I forgot that we didn't didn't touch upon that, and that's a huge value add, right? It's having that integrated. Um, so before we get to the kind of the benefits and you know the outcomes that you both have seen uh, after implementing case management, we did have a question in the chat, which is actually a really great point. So, um, for I mean for everyone here on the line, but also for you, Emily and Vanessa, uh, for organizations working in centralized functions. So how are branch locations interacting with case management currently? So a really great example is, you know, a member lost a swimsuit at the branch, you know, they go up to the front desk and say, hey, I lost this. How are they uh, interacting with the with the system? So for us, for things like that, that are not really system related, <clears throat> we do forward those on to the branches. Um, I, I, I feel like we should be probably assigning the branches a task, but we haven't kind of gotten there uh, yet to say that we're you know, that I trust that they're checking their task. <laughs> um, so uh, I want to make sure that they're getting back to people, but we do log um, who we forwarded the question to and um, put that on and connect it to the, the contacts account. So we know that, um, you know, who we've, um, who was supposed to get back to the person. And the other thing that we do sometimes is we might say, oh, you know, that's not a question I can answer for you, but Eric, our swim lesson coordinator at the, at the branch can answer that. And then we, um, we CC Eric on the email back to the member also. So he's getting a copy of it and he can, he can continue that conversation on with the member. So you're not truly assigning the case to the branch or assigning the case to the aquatics director yet. Right, not yet, no. Okay. That's and, I say, and I say yes. I wrote that, that down really and I <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> That's phase two. <laughs> awesome. um, all right, everyone. So I, I really want to get into this kind of collaborative fire, fireside chat here and talk about the benefits you're all seeing. And I thought it'd be really beneficial to lump the benefits into three groups. Um, so, you know, the benefits of case management for your members, uh, for your staff, of course, and then for your organization as a whole. Um, I think it's really unique. So, uh, Emily, why don't you start to kind of talk about, you know, all the great things that are happening now that you have cases in place. <laughs> okay. 
So I think for the members, um, so our team, we maintain an on-call schedule. So we support the members uh, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. and then Saturday and Sunday mornings. So for our members, if they're having a system-related problem, they really never have to wait more than 12 hours to get an answer. And most of them are resolved within minutes. So if I know Tuesday is my day to maintain, you know, to watch the member cases, uh, we get back to people pretty quickly. And um, especially on like registration days when, you know, we can see the questions coming in, we're able to jump in, see what their problem is and help them right away. So, you know, being able to log on as a member or view the community as the members seeing it, we can often see where they're stuck. So maybe they haven't filled out a question or, you know, they, they haven't signed a contract or something. And we have our timer set so that the members have like an hour to complete a transaction. Mm -hmm. So typically on a bit busy registration day, which we have on Monday, we sit and we watch it all day long and we're able to help people finish those transactions so they don't end up as pips or drafts. Mm -hmm. And um, we get as many people happy as we possibly can because they got their swimming lesson spot. So, um, you know, there's, we're able to help them finish that transaction. So I think that's one of the biggest benefits to the members, um, like the speed that we're able to help them. And we love that we can see what the members seeing and help them specifically with their problem without having to send back and forth 25 emails like, what does your screen look like? <laughs> it should look like this or whatever. So I up on Zoom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, totally. um, and for staff, like truthfully, like we never had a formalized support process for, um, you know, staff um, questions about our old system. So like, this has been a new thing for them that they know exactly where to send their, their questions. And, um, you know, they're going to get answers pretty quickly on those too. So, and now I love that we have them in cases and we're going to be able to really track and see how many we're getting every day and what they are related to. So I think that's going to help us tremendously. That's awesome. And I think I shared, you know, corporately, um, you know, I think, nothing's ever perfect. Um, you know, you always have people who potentially could get upset about something, but I think because we're using all these support processes, my senior leadership is not hearing as many complaints as they would if we didn't have this in place. So we're able to get back to people quickly and um, help them the best that we can, at least let them know we're working on their problem. And I think that's, that's helping us um, overall as an organization. So very cool. I have two things to touch on. So the last point from a corporate standpoint, I remember we were chatting about um, cybersecurity and kind of like policy enhancement. Can you talk to us a little bit around like, you know, how that helped from the kind of IT perspective and maybe some, you know, phishing attempts, and et cetera? Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we always, we do definitely get some interesting emails. Um, so yeah. So I think um, having everything in cases, you know, we, we are, we're able to see clearly who, uh, who where the information's coming from too. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Uh, and from the first two points, I know that we chatted about this and, you know, now that you have all this, you know, accurate data and, you know, you can see, you know, where are the highest volumes of cases coming from, you know, which, which issue, which department you've been able to staff accordingly, first off, you know, you know, uh, pertaining to the days, but also mm -hmm specialty perspective. I know you're saying like, you know, now we have some folks who are, they, they know all things about finance and, you know, all the finance related questions get directed to them. So having all right. this has allowed you to, you know, find uh, these kind of niche expertise areas that your, your, uh, your staff now, now have, which is they very do. Cool. Absolutely. You know, I think the system's really big and it's hard for one person to know everything. So we definitely all have our things that we are the most familiar with. So if, you know, like Tiffany might be the expert on membership changes and Karen's the expert on terminations or, you know, things like that. So I think that definitely helps us. And, you know, we recognize that we can't all know everything at every time. So we go, you know, it helps us go to the right person. Exactly. I love it. And then for like planning for the future, I know that, you know, through thinking of phone integration, um, anything else you're thinking about when it comes to case management and, and next phase? Um, not specifically case management, but the next thing that's kind of on our mind that's related to the 360 customer view is looking for like a survey tool that in integrates with uh, Salesforce so that I think that'll just be another opportunity for us to see you know, like this person's complaining and they've been submitting cases or, you know, they have, they come in or they don't come in. So I think, I think that's just another opportunity to have a whole view of our customer. That's awesome. Very great. Uh, Vanessa, before we get to you, we've got another question here. Um, 
how do the branch folks know support cases? So members get help at the desk over the phone and via email. How are we integrated with what is happening in the branch or how the branch knows what centralized support has done? I kind yeah. of- Yeah, and so it doesn't have to just be centralized help desk and you yeah. shouldn't be leaving the branches out of this. So the idea is that based on the type of question that's coming in, you can route it to the central office if that's where it belongs. But if you can identify from the type that came in that it is a branch specific question, you could route that directly there. So I think that there should be, all users in the branch should are gonna see the case history and then uh, they could be part of, uh, they could be people that a case is assigned to, to work on as well. So uh, it, it's really how you roll it out, whether you're just trying to centralize everything into a call center, but for the delivery, think about it like any other help desk with tier one, tier two, tier three. Tier one is your centralized place. All of your external inputs are coming there, but it should then filter out. I can't solve this at the central office. It needs to go to the branch, just reassign ownership. Uh, and then that person works the case there. So I think everybody should be solving member service issues and yeah, it shouldn't matter where they're located. Yeah, good point, Johnny, great point. Uh, Vanessa, so for Why Memphis, um, before we get into the benefits, I know you have some pretty incredible stats to share with us around kind of volume of cases and, you know, a percentage of cases closed. So why don't you share those first and then we'll get into uh, the three layers of benefits. Yeah, so we are averaging about a thousand cases a week, which um, I don't know that we would have been able to really quantify that before. Um, and it's kind of crazy. So we've only been using case management for about 15 and a half months. And in that time, we've opened close to 66,000 cases. So when I say averaging a thousand, it's really a little more than a thousand per week. Um, but that's, I mean, that's crazy for us. And, and we're closing almost that many, probably uh, about 980 are being closed per week. Um, and then those other ones are, are outstanding or, um, are with our trouble teams that are struggling to learn to use the platform. But um, uh, so, but it, pretty crazy for us, you know, imagine if, if that many were coming through before via email or, and we didn't have a way to track them, I mean, that, or to know where they are, there's definitely a lot of those w that would fall through the cracks. Exactly. Yeah. And all of a sudden those members wouldn't get the support because, you know, it, that happened. There wasn't the, the infrastructure in place to support them. Yeah, those numbers, though, crazy. I, I can't even believe that. Um, but kudos for you guys uh, and especially your, your ratio to close is also really great. Um, so other than that, uh, what are the really the benefits that you're seeing from, you know, the member perspective, staff, and then from your organization as a whole? Yeah, I mean, I think it's really, uh, I'll just echo everything that Emily said, right? You know, it's that, and, and we're not fully on the platform yet. So we're, in our, we have a separate um, platform that we're using for membership. So that's probably another one of our challenges right now. Um, but, you know, over this next year, we're going to be uh, making that change and, and being able to get that 360 view of the member. But even, even already, we've been able to, you know, um, just have so much more visibility into uh, what are people asking? How how quickly are we able to attend to them? Um, are they are they a problem person? Are they not a problem person? You know, are they are just are like Emily? Are they having that same problem over and over again? And how can we help uh, help them so that they don't have that same problem over and over again? Um, but definitely for our teams. Um, we've been able to centralize. And so a lot of those requests, instead of having to be done by paper, um, uh, can be done, you know, digitally now. And it's not, and not digitally in a Google form where we have a spreadsheet and we're striking through and highlighting and trying to keep track of, you know, that we've done all thousand requests. This way we can keep it organized. We can have a list view that once we finish it, it goes away. So you're able to keep track of, you know, how many cancellations do I have to do? And I'm the person who does the cancellations or maybe I'm gonna be out because I'm ill and somebody else is gonna take over that work. They can just look at that same list or, or look at that dashboard if we have a, a component on there that shows us how many there are and click into that and just take care of that work much quicker. So definitely for our organization, it's allowed us to, to centralize a lot of those processes that we were hoping to centralize. And it's really, it's really been, um, been what we were hoping it would be, you know? So you've, you've got the data set now 
that you can go back and see the, the commonality of questions and things like that. Have you identified things where some type of case deflection, so instead of somebody's putting in, I need to know about this, but it's been asked a thousand times and you've got something written up and you could guide them to it, or is it really something more where staff has to take action still? We don't yet. Um, I'd love to actually get to the, where we're using knowledge. Um, I just, um, you know, I, I'm kind of a one man show in some things. So I'm trying to uh, incrementally get us a comfortable with the system. We we had no, you know, prior knowledge of Salesforce uh, prior to 15 months ago. And so uh, we also have a very small team, uh, you know, dedicated to really just me doing this amongst also managing our other systems. Obviously, people do different parts of it, but, um, you know, so as far as, you know, adapting and growing, uh, it's it's had to go at a little bit of a slower pace just because of that, but um, certainly that's something we would love to do, um, and especially as we roll out um, traction in the coming year, uh, it would be great to do that because we'll have that community um, access where we didn't have that before, so um Definitely something we're hoping to do, but not something we currently have. Yeah, if they're asking for, you know, whatever their password to be reset, um, we've got to take care of that for them every time right now. But, um, you know, maybe in the future, right? Understood. Not if they're up and running first. They've got priorities yeah. here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <We're>, baby steps. <laughs> no, you know, the point was not uh, why haven't you? It's just that the point is when you get that data set, that's when you can identify those things. It's like, why of those thousand calls are we answering these 107, which can easily just be redirect somebody to, and it doesn't even have to, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be Salesforce knowledge, just could be another link on your webpage and just anything. So, yeah. Um, There's a great question that's just come in from Tom there, Steph. Yes. Uh, for to Stefan's uh, first question about licenses. Oh. oh, TBD. This is an ongoing conversation. I don't think we have any from any, anyone from Salesforce here to answer that, but uh, I can get that answer. Johnny, where did we net out around platform licenses and service? Cloud? Yeah. Yeah. So there is access to basic cases, uh, basic case management. So it gets into a really, uh, it gets into re really some fluffy areas. Yeah. You can manage cases the way you saw me do it today, but you can't use the service console. Um, uh, yeah, so there, there is, you know, there's some things like the service console, which is an even more advanced split view UI that I didn't show today. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll get Salesforce to write us an official position paper on this because there's lots of comparisons and some, uh, uh, some conflicting information for sure. Yes, and I remember, yeah, you mentioning that um, just partial access with that platform level. So not the full, the full suite. Uh, yeah, great question from Tom uh, to the panelists here. So what about metrics and KPIs with cases, right? So uh, time to first response, time to resolution, et cetera. Are you all tracking that today? Uh, what does that look like? We're just, we're right now, I, that's a great idea. I should be doing that, but we are <laughs> mostly just tracking like how many we're getting in every day. And um, most of them are closed by the end of the day. So I, I will make myself a new dashboard when I get off the phone. <laughs> no, Tom, we do that with Interact Direct with our support cases. So we are, we want to know that stuff. That's super important to us and make sure that, you know, how long are our cases uh, sitting, you know, open for? How long are they sitting in the working stage? And kind of what's our average response time rate? So we do that at Traction Rec, but uh, really great, really great question to the panelists. Yeah, yeah all the data is there to drive all that reporting for sure. Exactly, yeah. Perfect. Well, we have nine minutes left. We did pretty good here. I will open up the floor to any other questions uh, from the attendees. If you want to come off mute, please. Um, happy, happy to chat. If you want Johnny to show anything else in the demo org, he's always happy to do that. <laughs> Well, and maybe just the other thing to, uh, to to call out here is that this is more like a a project to implement something like lead management. It's not a traction rec implementation. This is a project that can be stood up in weeks, um, <laughs> as opposed to a, a months long project to to do some full transformation. So it can be really quick. It's a great entry point. Either lead management or member service case management can be a great way to get into the Salesforce ecosystem if you're not already there. Stand that up. Start to move across some of your data. Get used to it, etc. So, yeah, good entry point. 
Yeah, that's it. I, I mentioned that really briefly earlier, but that's exactly what uh, Memphis did. So they started with case management and lead management, got their feet wet, and then uh, and now they're finally working on you know that fuller uh, digital transformation. But uh, for the individuals who are on Salesforce and maybe even on Traction Rec, uh, Marina mentioned earlier, there's some really great resources to self-implement this as well if you want to, um, right? Um, I think Jen from Bender, Jen, you guys did that or you did it to some capacity, but a lot of our customers have really been enabled on the platform to go and do this themselves, which is great. Uh, but sales, uh, Traction Rec is, of course, here to support you if you are a net new to the Salesforce ecosystem and, and need some help getting started. Awesome. Well, I don't see any more questions come in, um, but we are happy to do follow-up demos, uh, follow-up Q&A, you name it. Uh, Johnny and I will uh, take meetings whenever whenever you'd like. So please email myself uh, at sandersonattractionrec.com. And um, as I mentioned, this recording will be sent out so you can share it within your organizations. Um, and thank you all so much for joining us today. <laughs>